Everyone uses the concept of critique, but do we know what we're really talking about? I am Rodrigo Gim, an anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. What do you understand by the concept of critique? Please comment below the video so I can enter into a chat with you. If you believe thinking is fundamental in your life and you think you can discuss thought, please subscribe to this channel because that is our task here. For Foucault, critique is a practice of making that which seems given, the truth, the way things are, or that which appears self-evident, to not be evident anymore. It is to displace dominant forms of knowledge with counter-knowledges and counter-memories. It is to show that whatever dominant knowledges have had as their space of sovereignty, this same sovereignty needs continual effort of invisibilization, of subjugation of other knowledges in order to hold itself in space and time. And that many forms of knowledge can only hold by changing. Even dominant forms of knowledge can thrive only if they continually invest the spaces and subjects they are partially responsible for, with adaptations, with possibilities for some relative autonomy. Thus, critique is the art of charting moving relations, a moving strategy of forces, where truth only holds space when articulated with power relations and with forms of subjectivation. I have said before how Foucault articulates power, truth, and the subject without in any way equating them. Foucault says, citation, I dream of the intellectual destroyer of evidence and universalities, the one who, in the inertias and constraints of the present, locates and marks the weak points, the openings, the lines of power, who incessantly displaces himself, doesn't know exactly where he is heading, nor what he'll think tomorrow because he's too attentive to the present. Foucault's work was a continuous attentiveness to respond to what he saw as needing to be critiqued in the present. And this critique for him meant the production of a deconstruction of the present with a view to make openings for difference, for different ways of thinking and acting and living. He outlined several ways that critique is practiced in the West and all have to do with the rise of the Christian pastoral in the 15th and 16th centuries. Christian pastoral is the institutionalization of the truth of the world, of the self, and of power as linked to the Christian church. When the supposed right way to live was commanded by the church, it was the church itself that was governing over truth. And so with it, critique around the 15th and 16th centuries in the West, says Foucault, was dominantly a critique of scripture with readings that were supposedly truer readings of the scripture. A kind of fundamentalism was sought for, for by some people for the one true reading of the scriptures. So here we have the critique of truth in search of a truer truth, a higher truth, using the same texts. Foucault doesn't bring up this search for the truer truth in vain. We can make the links between the search for truer truths and how our, our institutions function, for example, how the legal the judicial system functions to find guilt and how subjects function trying to find their interiority, their truer truths in an interiority. Foucault talks about a second mode of critique, which is the critique of the limits of knowledge. This kind of critique he links to the struggle against forms of government, forms of self-government, government of the others, and government as state functions. This critique asks the question, 
what are the limits of knowledge or what are the limits of government? What can we know and what does this do to the right to govern? The right to govern over others, what are its limits? What are the limits of self-governing? In this mode of critique, what sustains it is a paradigm of natural law, as if there were natural limits to knowledge, to power, and to the subject that could be known. If we only knew the limits, says this critique, we could then naturally govern ourselves and others gently, even kindly. The third mode of critique Foucault talks about is the critique of certainties and of the real motives and reasons that move an authority or another. So authorities and institutions and subjects provide reasons and certi certainties for their actions. But the critique of certainties tries to show what is behind actions, the supposedly real reasons for actions that are discoursed as certainties. So it tries to see if there are other reasons for authorities, institutions, and subjects to act that are not clear, that are not shown up front. In all of these forms of critique in modernity, Foucault shows how what operates are different strategies at play between how knowledge, power, and subjects are configured to act in very specific ways. Says Foucault, citation, the core of critique is basically made of the bundle of relationships that are tied to one another, or one to the two others, power, truth, and subject. And here we must remember, he never equates power with truth or with the subject. What he does is to show their interconnections, but never equating them. If he equated them, then power would determine truth or the subject, or else the subject would determine truth and power, or truth would determine power and the subject. And this would be a shallow and unattentive reading of the past or of the present for Foucault. Foucault says that if critique were about questioning truth on its effects of power and questioning power on its discourses of truth, then, citation, critique would essentially ensure the desubjugation of the subject in the context of what we would call, in a word, the politics of truth. So here Foucault is pointing to the ways in which speaking truth to power is already the dominant form of critique today that seeks for the liberation of subjects. Subjects in the modern world are already expected to be critical of power by speaking truth to power. That is already in place as a dominant practice, as a politics of truth. The politics of truth of our days already expects us to speak truth to power, as if behind power lies truth. So we participate in a form of governmentality where power appears as an effect of truth. And the way to resist dominance would be then to resort to a higher truth that could dismantle or transform power. But this is not the way things are necessarily. What Foucault is showing is not the way things are, but how they function through dominant practices of power, truth, and the subject, where truth is taken as primary to action, as the origin of action and of history itself. And then desubjugation from domination would operate from truth. This truth being worked in many strategies and forms, institutions, cultures, and of course, the practices of self to self, where the individual looks to his interiority for the truth of, of himself in order to be self-critical. That is, in order to cut away those parts of himself that are not true, leaving only those parts that are supposed, supposedly his true self. Pastoral power produced the knowledge of the self as the highest imperative for the individual. And this shows up as a war of the self on itself. Foucault shows other ways of practicing subjectivity with relation to truth and to power, when in his last works, 
he studied the care of the self, which is very different from the knowledge of the self that is still dominant today and that we are describing here. But this is a theme for another video. Now I'd like to go to Nietzsche for some ideas on how to understand critique. For Nietzsche, we must not be self-critical if there is no place to affirm ourselves from the start. So for him, self-critique or self-deconstruction can only happen together and at the same time as a self-reconstruction or self-affirmation happens. And we must remember that for Nietzsche there is no unity of the self, there is always a multiplicity of forces that come through us. So self-critique without a self-affirmation is what Nietzsche calls a bad conscience. There, there can be no potency for one's life, body, mind, without the critique of self being accompanied by an affirmation of forces that seek to emerge in ourselves. We must be critical of the world around us and of ourselves only to the extent that there are events that are diminishing our possibilities for a fuller, fuller life or for those we care about. The continuous self-critique in ourselves, with ourselves, or our continuous critique of the world around us, if they are not coming from an affirmation of what matters to us that, and that already exists, things that already exist that matter to us, then it's coming from nothingness. It is then that a nihilist will, a will against life itself, a weak will, a moral will, a will that is not critical. It is only a bad conscience of self against itself or resentment against another or against life and the world. When being critical, one needs to be careful not to become the monster one is fighting against, as Nietzsche warned. So critique means being critical at the same time and while affirming and affirmation must be the point of being critical to oneself and of being critical to the world. What are we affirming? What are we affirming? And from there, we critique. All right, people, so now is the time when I ask you to please leave comments and questions so I can enter into a conversation with you in the next videos or right now but on text under the videos. This is an immersion in Nietzsche and Foucault. It's a conversation via videos where the questions brought by you I bring to the debate and I also bring new questions. See you next Thursday.